Lessons I learned about relationships after getting annulled. Number one, you don't need to be in a relationship to be complete, to be happy, to feel whole. If you are not complete, happy, and whole by yourself, then you have no business getting into a relationship. I know that we always hear this and it's actually quite cliche at this point, but I'm sure at one point in your life or you have friends who you've heard or you've probably also said yourself, he doesn't make me happy na eh. Guys, comedian bang hanap nyo? You gotta make yourself happy, girl. We depend our happiness too much on our partner. You shouldn't depend on anyone to make you happy. It's not your partner's job to make you happy. And it's not your job to make your partner happy. You should be two happy whole individuals coming together, choosing to be together, and not because you both make each other happy. Because there are days that you will really get on each other's nerves. There are days you will not make each other happy. So it's just digging a hole for yourself. Don't be in a relationship to find happiness. Don't depend on your partner for your own happiness. And that also goes the same as don't rely on your partners to solve your problems for you. Be there for each other, support each other. I believe that a good, mature, healthy relationship um, is when two people, they can actually live without one another, but they choose to be together. So yung, I can't live without you, Nayan. That's bullshit. <laughs> you can live without your partner. I mean, come on. It's gonna be hard. You're gonna miss each other if you break up, but life goes on. You are going to live. Kasama Jan, one of the biggest realizations I have is when you have problems. Sometimes your disagreements are not actually major. Meantan, it's just a tone of voice. Meantan, it's just you were pissed off, you have your period, you're so irritable, and this small thing escalates. So most of it is really small, petty things. And one of the hallmarks for me of a mature and a healthy relationship is being self aware of your own triggers, being self-aware of what ticks you and what angers you. And when you're arguing, you kind of step back and you self-assess. Why are we arguing? And is it because of how I feel at this moment? What is it, what is it really you are fighting about? It's having that self-awareness and self-check that makes a big deal. Sometimes, irritable ako. I'm gonna have my period and I just needed space. And speaking of space, I think that's one of the biggest things as well is you have to give each other the space to realize those mistakes and process those thoughts going on in your mind and emotions. This again, is like a lot of self-work because at this point, feeling go when you're angry at each other, it's so easy to just blame and blame the other, you know, especially if you're both strong-headed people. Sometimes you're just all up in each other's throats and just wanting to hear someone say sorry first. Give in ka na, ma pride ka masyado. And it takes a lot of maturity to actually step back and think, shocks, ako ata to kasi ang sungit ko ngayon and I'm just, I think I'm taking it out on you or projecting it on you. We have a lot also of projecting that we do in a relationship. There are things that we carry on from a past relationship which makes us build these defense mechanisms that we are not aware of. And uh, yeah, again, that's a lot of self-awareness to be able to pinpoint that. Next, another thing that we are always, we almost always hear in every best matter made of honor speech is communicate, communication. You know, I think that is, has been said again and again, and we always hear it. I don't think we fully understand what that means. For example, there was one video of Solen and Nico. Disclaimer, I'm a fan of this couple. I actually asked, bang Nico Bolziko in this world? But yeah, they have their own thing. They communicate well, I'm sure. But these skits that they have on the bullied husband, there was one video that really struck me there. And it was when Solen was chopping and Nico was just on his phone and then Solen chopped 
more. Parang relax nung pa niya kaya si okay. No words spoken there, but Nico knew what was happening. You know, it was funny. I have. I get it. I'm sure we've all been there. We expect our men to be psychics, but I think that has to be addressed. We gotta talk about that, girls. Yung tipong oh ano ano may problema ba? Bakit ang tahimik mo? Gulit ka ba? Te, wala. Girls, ladies, <laughs> come on. Men are not psychic. Men need to be given clear cut instructions. They are problem solvers. And uh, bihira lang yung mga sobrang empathetic na mga tao. We have to communicate. I know Nico and Solen meant nothing. Like, it was a joke. They have their own thing. I'm sure Nico and Solen, they have great communication. They understand each other. And that is like, just a joke for them but to others who are watching they might feel like bakit hindi ka parang si Nico hindi mo na intindihan na ano ba when i chop harder that means ganito you expect them to understand you and you don't communicate what you want babe ako na yung naghugas ngayon pwede ba ikaw naman ng hugas ng plato bukas simple as that right hindi yung you're just angry you're just you know Ines, and you're just, oh my gosh, showing this passive aggressiveness and you're expecting your partner to read it. And uh, no, that has to stop expecting that from your partner. You're not psychics, both of you. So men also shouldn't treat you like that. When they have issues with you, they have to say it. And you gotta communicate properly, maturely. Not communicate in a way na yung parang nag-usap kayo may banat na or parang ikaw kasi. Like, you can communicate and you can voice your problems in a calm way. Sometimes that's hard. That's why if you feel like you can't do that, you gotta work on it. Um, I'm sure when I'm so angry too, it'll be hard to be calmly communicative. But that is a big part of being in a healthy relationship and that leads me to my last learning for today because i think like i said a lot of things already and i just wanted this to be a short video expectations are the killer of relationships not like the ultimate killer but i think a big and a huge killer that we that sort of goes unnoticed because when you look at it it looks like another problem, but the underlying, underlying, go to the root cause of why you're fighting and why you're disappointed and why you're sad or why you're just, you know, not happy with your partner anymore is because you expected a lot of things. For example, to go back to number one, you expect them to make you happy. Number two, you expect them to be psychics and mind readers. That brings me to my point number three, you just expect a lot. Don't expect a lot from your relationship. Of course, when you get into a relationship, there are expectations. What I'm saying is, I guess, when you get into a relationship with someone, you have a standard. You talk about what you want, you talk about how you are, you talk about when you're getting married, you talk about, okay, we're both gonna work, okay, no, you're just gonna stay at home and take care of the kids while I work, or the other way around, be house husband, I'll work for us, you know. You have these conversations before you get married, when you're in a relationship, you talk about your goals, um, where you're headed. So you're kind of on the same line. Um, so that's for me is like a given. Those standards, you voice them out, you tell each other what you expect from one another, then you're clear cut, you understand, and you're on the same page. So for me, when you voice out those expectations, they're valid. But what I'm talking about here, na expectations are the expectations that live in your head that you don't voice out and you just simply feel like you're entitled to. So some women expect their partners to be malambing all the time, um, be like the prince charming in the movies, give them gifts, flowers, give them the world. Girl, this is not gay drama. And we have gone a long way from fairy tales. Um, this is real life. It's a lot of drama. We can't pass the standards in But of course, there are situations where we want that and our partners should give it to us. But hindi all the time. Hindi parate. Same as the men who 
expect their women to be like domestic goddesses and Nigella Lawson. Woo! Bagong potahe every meal. Especially if you have kids, you just expect so much from your wives or your partners. Of course, there are certain standards that are given. You do that for each other because you love each other. But what I'm saying is you give. You give what you have. If you love someone, just uh, do that lovingly, give it lovingly without expecting anything in return. And if you expect something from your partner that much, I'm gonna go back to number two and voice it out. Babe, I expect you to sana naman cook me breakfast every time in the morning because I like your cooking and kahit pagod ka, gumising ka kasi inexpect ko yun sayo eh. Just kidding. But yeah, voice out your expectations so they are valid and you don't get disappointed in your head with your partner without them knowing. Because you have these expectations para of them but they don't know. So that's unfair. And if you feel like that's too much from your partner to ask, choose your battles. Know when to say no. No, I can't do that. You have to adjust. Um, for example, waking up early in the morning when you have a kid and you're up all night breastfeeding a child and you're still expected to cook breakfast in the morning. I mean, those little things, they sound so shallow. Those are not big issues like infidelity and money issues, but those simple things marinate and uh, it's gonna explode at the end and we don't want that. And that's it for now. Like, I said a lot of things. I said I'm just gonna share a few, but dami ko nang sinabi. Watch out for my book. I'm just kidding. Um, if you need a love coach, you can. I'm just kidding. Daming racket pala, no? So with that, let me leave you with these messages. If you are single, enjoy this time. Don't feel pressured to get married, to be in a relationship to find the one just because everyone else around you is getting married, having babies, moving on with their timelines. Let me tell you this fact that I'm sure not a lot of people talk about because who are brave enough to say it, but there are a lot of married couples are in a relationship. In a relationship is because if you're in a relationship, you can still get out of that relationship easily, you know. But there are a lot of married couples who are unhappy and want out, but they stay because society, number one, it's like, oh, she's, she's separated, or she's annulled, it's still a taboo in our country, and we still don't talk about it a lot. But it actually takes a whole lot of courage to step out of a toxic manipulative relationship so if you're single enjoy this time get to know yourself get to know your triggers if you have past traumas in your relationships work on that so you don't bring it over to your next relationships and you're actually blessed to be able to have this time to get to know yourself and let that partner find you who is also whole, complete, mature, and everything else on his own. So you'll be two whole people finding each other and choosing to be together. For those of you who are in a relationship but feel like you're unhappy, try to look inside yourself and see what is really making you unhappy. Maybe it's you maybe you have issues you have to resolve on your own but also know that you should be able to enjoy life still you are not just tied to your partner just because you're in a relationship or you're married you should still be able to feel like you're you you're your person it's not like you're when you're married you lose yourself and you're just a wife you're just a mother you should still feel like yourself you should still be happy you can get to enjoy life like you were when you were single but of course with added responsibilities that you happily choose because um you choose to be married but you shouldn't feel like you are less of a person and feeling like you're just existing to serve a man who has so many expectations of you that you don't achieve you feel like you're not enough know your worth and know when to walk away for those of you who are in a relationship or are married and are happy, cheers! We are happy for you genuinely. Keep that fire burning and 
Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Thank you for listening. Watch out for my book. Bye. It was on this day two years ago when I had the sudden urge and itch to respond to my annulment proceedings. I was a non-participant in our annulment, which means that I didn't answer. It was one-sided, so it was like a non-contentious annulment. And for some reason, it was during this day that I suddenly had the urge to respond and to get my day in court and to say my truth, to say my side of the story after almost three years of proceedings from my ex-husband's side. And at that point, we were just waiting for the results to come out. For some reason, I was having a, the itch not only to say my side of the story, but feeling like the annulment wouldn't push through because um, it was weak. And the next day, February 14, on Valentine's Day, I was in court getting all the documents with my lawyer. Shout out to attorney Hannah Barsena. She was with me during Valentine's Day to get the documents and um, get our side of the story ready, my side of the story ready so that we can submit um, my response to the annulment. And then last year, on the same day, um, the judge was really I don't know if it was intentional, but um, it was on February 13, the same day. I don't know if it was Saja or T Judge Talaga, you know, it's just also so ironic, but it was also on the same day, a year after, after all our proceedings on my side went through, um, that our annulment case was finally decided and I got my annulment decision and it was and we were annulled it was granted and it was granted and i am officially annulled and it was ruled also on my side so the judge ruled on my favor which was a huge deal for me because one of the biggest decisions that pushed me to have my day in court and say my side of the story even if I could have just let it be and just ate up all the lies written there by the way that's how annulment is here in the Philippines it's very ano throwing mud at each other or at least one person is willing to get all the mud because it has to be really outrageous for your annulment to be granted but at the same time for me I just spoke the truth so <laughs> anyway so that was last year and uh, yeah it's it has been a year since i'm officially in all but it's been a long four or five years since you know those were happening i guess this is the time that i feel like i should share my learnings especially since i had um not a lot but a few i had a few um, DMs from other women who were just asking me how I got out of my marriage and how I found the courage to and how annulment goes and so many things so during that time I felt so lost and when I was researching there was really very little I mean who would talk about this openly right so I think that's where I come in that's probably I feel like it's God's way of telling me to speak up and to all the women who might be going through the same thing make them feel that they are not alone in this and um, I'm here for anyone who feels like they need some kind of you know encouragement words of advice because when I was going through this and I didn't know of anyone who went through it I didn't know what to do I I was so confused, I was so lost. Even googling it and finding like local cases by on here up. I didn't know what to do. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I digress. So let me just share with you a few learnings, relationship lessons that I learned after getting a knot. 